Hello and welcome. My name is Ben. Welcome to today's tutorial on Nanhua Primary Preliminary Examination Paper 2, Question 18. The last question. That is where most students usually find or have difficulty solving it. Let's take a look. Basket A contains 70 balls and 100 marbles. Basket B contains 90 balls and 20 marbles. After some balls and marbles were transferred from basket A to basket B, 40% of basket A contained balls and 30% of basket B contained marbles. How many balls and marbles were transferred from basket A and basket B altogether? Well, it's very lengthy, a lot of uh, words. So students always have to check their bookings with that of the question. Because I'm confused too, <laughs> going back. 30% of the basket B contain marbles, so usually students will get confused or get mixed up with 30% of the bas uh, basket B contain balls or something like that. Always have to refer and make sure you you have noted the correct percentage. And before we move on, there's another important hidden meaning here that student needs to understand or to know. What do you what does it mean when some marbles and balls were transferred from basket A to basket B? Students must know that when there was a transfer from A to B within themselves, the total number of balls and marbles is always the same before and after. Having known that, solve whatever they, we, they could step by step. So since we know that the total is the same, Let's work out what is the total number of balls. 70 plus 90, which is 160. And what is the total number of marbles? Okay, remember, this is in both the basket A and B. So the next thing is to work out. So, how many, what is the total number of balls and marbles in basket A? In this question, there is no direct relationship between the total number of balls and marbles in basket A with that of basket B. So there's no way we cannot use units for basket B too. So if let's say you've decided to, to use units for basket A, students must use parts for basket B. And of course, how many units would you assign for basket A? Looking at a percentage, 40%. So for 40 out of 100 reduced to its simplest form is actually 2 fifth or 2 over 5. So naturally, students are very used to or very well versed in that they will say, oh, the total number of balls and marbles in basket is 5 units. Yes, very good. Proceed further. So what is the total number, um, so what is the number of balls in basket A in terms of units? We work out to be 40% of 5 units, which is 2 units. And likewise, what is the number of marbles in basket A, which we can work out easily with the remaining 60%. So which work out to be 3 units. Like what I just said, to reinforce the point again, basket B has to be called parts, so they don't get mixed up with the two, unless there is a direct relationship being told here, but there is none. So. How many units to assign? But of course, the smaller the, the units, the better it is. Of course, I wouldn't want to assign one, uh, one part. Why? Because if I were to use one part, that would end up with fraction. And students usually cannot cope with that. They make careless mistakes to do how to proceed on from there. So we, we use whole numbers. And what is the an appropriate whole number to use? Going by the percentage again, 30%. So 30 out of 100, which is 3 out of 10. So the total number of balls and marbles in basket B must be 10 parts or preferably to be 10 parts. Of course student can use 100 parts but like I always say the smaller the number the easier it is to manage. All right and then from there work out what is the number of balls in basket B in terms of parts. Bear in mind this is a bit tricky because now they talk about 30% of the basket B contain marbles. At first it was balls and then now talk about marbles so periodically students are encouraged to check to make sure that correct they they get the correct percentage 
So number of marbles in basket B will be 30% and which is 3 parts. So these are the information that we have just worked out. So what's the next step? The next step is always to solve the units and the parts. And how do we solve it? Right? It's a thing of something equal being, it's something equal to something. <laughs> so what is equal here? So let's take a look. Look at the arrow. What can you see? Number of balls in basket A, number of balls in basket B. So what does it equal? Can see? So how about this one? If you add the number of balls in basket B to the number of balls, uh, sorry, the number of marbles in basket A to the number of marbles in basket B, what do you get? Don't you get a total? Isn't it your equation? But of course we don't write equation, we just draw the arrow sign, but basically they are the same. So with that, we know that number of balls in basket A is 2 units, 2 units plus the number of balls in basket B, 7P. So we, we have an equation here. So 2U plus 7P is arrow, <laughs> 160. Of course, we can't use equals. So likewise, in re with regards to marbles, there's another expression here. So 3U plus 3, uh, 3P is equivalent to 120. So what's next? Student may ask. Okay, well, what's next is think of a science experiment. You see the changes, um, the differences in value here? So, and the differences in the value of the, these two variables. Oh, two variables. Can you conduct an experiment with two variables being different in the different experiments? No, you can't. You can only have one variable that is different. The, the rest of the other variables must be kept the same. So going by this, this same logic, we have to make one of the variables the same. And which one do you use? Of course, 2u, 3u, what is the LCM of that? 6u, yeah? But if we were to use 7 and 3p, you, you have a greater number to manage. Because the LCM of the lowest common multiple of 7 and 3 is 21. So like, like what I say, the smaller the number, the easier it is to manage. So, to you, how do I move to 6U? I need to have three groups of 2U. But remember, this is a group, so you have to move throughout. So 2U times 3, so 7P times 3, and 160 times 3. Likewise, for 3U plus 3P equals to 120, you have to have two groups of that, so that you make 6U. So 6U plus 6P is equivalent to 240, right? Can s mm -hmm. So now I, I hope the student will be able to see. But of course, if for some who can't, it's alright, I'll draw the model here. But eventually, student must be able to recognize that whatever the difference now, 480, and 240 must be due to the differences in parts. In model, this is how it looks like. So whatever the difference, can you see that? It must be due to the 15p, 15 parts. Soft, right? So having soft your parts, what is one part? You work out to be 15 parts is equivalent to 240. So what is one part? One part is equal to 16. So answer the question now. So how many balls and marbles would transfer from basket A and basket B altogether? In order to know how many will transfer, you need to know how what's the number, what's the total number of balls and marbles in the basket in the end? Because we were given a first, right? And since we have worked out what is the value of P, it's easier to refer to basket B because you remember early on basket B was assigned parts. And we assign 10 parts, isn't it? For basket B, yeah. 10 parts for basket B. So what is 10 parts? 10 parts is equal to 160. So with that, this is in the end, and we have total, um, the total number of balls and, bus, uh, and, and marbles at first is 90 and plus 20. So we just take away. So the number of balls and marbles transferred will be 160 minus 90 minus 20 and they give you 50. That's it. 
as simple as it but a student needs to um, have a bit of steps certain concepts they must know that's it and of course continue practicing and we get there thank you